So today we'll be talking about free agent running backs in this 2021 NFL offseason. So last video, of course, we did quarterbacks, and it was guys like Mitch Trubisky, Dak Prescott, Jameis Winston. If you missed that one and you're interested, go back and watch that one. Today's running backs, I mean, next time we'll do wide receivers, then tight ends. We'll get to the rest of the position groups going forward. So leave in the comments where you think each of these running backs will go. Hopefully you guys enjoy this video, and let's get into it. So number one, we have Aaron Jones, and Aaron Jones has been one of the better running backs of the past. I would say three years or so. I remember his first game, I think. He came in. I think Ty Montgomery got hurt. Then Jamal Williams came in. He got hurt. And I think Aaron Jones got thrown in on some primetime game. I guess a Packers fan can fact check me on that one. But Aaron Jones kind of came out of nowhere. I feel like he was a fifth round pick maybe, but he's made the most of his opportunity. Now, I will say he's definitely benefited from being in a great system with a great offensive line and awesome quarterback and Aaron Rodgers. So, that definitely helps him, and I feel like for his career to, you know, basically play at the highest level, he should want to stay in Green Bay, but I don't I don't blame guys for wanting to get their money either. So I feel like if he wants to chase the money, a team like the Jets might actually work out for him. I feel like that would be a good fit because, like, in that Shanahan system that uh, Michael Fleur is going to run over there, I feel like a lot of it is just, like, one-cut type running backs, and I feel like Aaron Jones would be a good scheme fit for that. So, I mean, the Jets don't have the best offensive line as compared to the Packers, but still it would be an okay fit. And then you have the Dolphins who they have some cap space and they definitely have a need at running back uh, they tried it with Jordan Howard last year didn't really work out who else did they have I can't remember who else they had they had like Patrick Laird um, DeAndre Washington like they had a lot of guys that just not work out Miles Gaskin was good I will say Miles Gaskin was pretty good he came out of nowhere but outside of him there was no one that was too impressive for the Dolphins so if they want themselves like a top tier running back I, I could see Aaron Jones going there I ultimately think he goes back to Green Bay I don't know what the contract would be but I think they can afford him and I feel like he's a pretty important piece to their offense they might want to go with AJ Dillon the uh, second round rookie from last year and just go with him as a starter to save money I see that perspective as well so it's going to be interesting but I think the best career move for Aaron Jones would be to stay in Green Bay next we have Kenyon Drake who was with the Cardinals last year a former Miami Dolphin actually so he got traded from the Dolphins to the Cardinals in the middle of 2019 then got franchise tagged by the Cardinals for one year so he's a free agent once again I think ultimately he could go back to Arizona and have like that tag team with Chase Edmonds, which was a pretty nice, you know, combination there. Um, Drake had a pretty good year last year. It was a little underwhelming because like, you know, even in fantasy football, he was like a first round pick for a lot of people. I was hyping him up myself, but he did have 10 touchdowns, just under a thousand yards, but you know, he wasn't as good as he could have been. And we all know Kenyon Drake's not like a top tier running back, but he's also not bad either. I feel like Kenyon Drake is pretty good. Um, he's a decent receiver. He's a pretty good goal line back. Actually, he's not built like one, but he's a pretty good goal line back. Uh, does fumble the ball sometimes, which definitely hurts. But I think possible locations, of course, is going back to Arizona. They don't have a ton of cap space, but they can make it work for sure. The Jets, once again, the Jets need a running back. Like, I'm a person that doesn't believe that you should go out and spend a lot of money on running backs. But what the Jets had last year was so bad between, um, who was it, Samaji P. Ryan? No, it's LaMichael. LaMichael P. Ryan and uh, Frank Gore. I mean, that was just like, you know, it was ugly. So the Jets need some type of running back. I'm not spending like 10 plus million dollars per year on one of them, but if they can get Kenyon Drake for seven, eight million dollars a year, probably would not be the worst investment in the world. And especially having a young quarterback there as well would definitely help to have a nice running back. And the Buffalo Bills. So the Bills, they've talked about, I think Sean McDermott after the playoffs said he wants to have a better running game next year. They have Zach Moss, Devin Singletary. I don't think Drake's the best fit for this team. I have someone um, someone coming up later that I think would be a better fit, but I could see Drake going to Buffalo as well. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see where he goes. I think he should stay with the Cardinals. It's not a bad fit for him. I feel like it's a pretty good gig, but we'll find out what happens. Next, we have Chris Carson of the Seattle Seahawks, and he was a nice find from the seventh round, I believe. Had a nice career there in Seattle. Rashad Penny was supposed to be the guy. He was a former first-round pick, but didn't really work out. He was ineffective, then he got hurt. And I saw some reports that the Seahawks don't want to bring back Chris Carson. Don't know how true that is, but I feel like it was from a pretty legit you know, like Twitter account. So I don't know, but we'll find out what happens. I could see him not going back. So I feel like some other options would be Buffalo. I think this is the one that makes a lot of sense for the Bills because the Bills have a couple of decent running backs in Singletary and Moss, but they're not at Chris Carson's level, and I feel like Buffalo can really benefit from having a good power back like a Chris Carson. And Chris Carson's not a great receiver. He has some receiving ability. He had 37 receptions the past two years combined. Well, not combined. In each of the past two years. So he has some receiving ability, but he's not like a natural receiver. But 
I feel like behind the pretty good Buffalo offensive line, he fits their identity. He's a power runner, so I feel like that would be a really good fit for the Bills. I feel like the Patriots might be a good one because Rex Burkhead's a free agent, James White's a free agent. They still have Damian Harris, Sony Michelle, who are kind of similar to Chris, uh, Chris Carson. I would take Carson over those guys, so we'll see where they go with that one. Carson did have a f uh, fumbling issue at one point in his career, and Bill Belichick does not put up with that, so that's one thing to watch out for, so maybe it's not the best idea. And the Washington football team, I know they have McKissick and they also have Antonio Gibson, but it's not like um, McKissick's a guarantee to make the team. And for Gibson, he's kind of like a do-it-all type guy. And they had Peyton Barber for the Washington football team last year. Peyton Barber was not good whatsoever. So I feel like Chris Carson could replace him and play a smaller role. Like I don't see Chris Carson going to Washington and getting 15 to 20 carries per game. But if you got like 8 to 10 plus goal line duties, it would not be the worst idea in the world. So I feel like Washington might be a fit. Honestly, I have no idea, but I do like Buffalo for him a lot. Next, we have Philip Lindsay of the Denver Broncos, and I want to see him stay in Denver because like, he went to Colorado for college. I feel like he grew up in Colorado, too. Then got signed by Denver uh, as an undrafted free agent, which was a great story. He's had really good success there. Back-to-back 1,000-plus -back yard years. Then they signed Melvin Gordon last offseason, and the writing's kind of been on the wall since then. I feel like it doesn't make sense for them to keep him, but I want them to keep him in my heart. I feel like it would be a really good story if he kept playing there, but I could also see them moving off from him because with Melvin Gordon there, he played more last year. They still have Royce Freeman there, the former third round pick as well. So, I mean, there's a lot to, you know, there's a lot of mouths to feed there in the backfield. He did miss five games with an injury. I think it was separate injuries, actually. So he missed five games. He was kind of ineffective last year as compared to his previous years. He went from 5.4 yards per carry in 2018, then the 4.5, then the 4.3. He only had 14 targets last year, which I don't get. Like, I don't know why you're phasing Philip Lindsay, who was a pretty good pass catcher out of the receiving game. That didn't make much sense to me so I guess the best career move for Philip Lindsay would be to go somewhere else because they're not using him the right way so I mean I don't know what he wants I feel like he'd want to stay in Denver but they're not using him the right way so therefore I have no idea but possible landing spot spots once again the New York the New York Jets because I feel like the Jets once again with this Mike LaFleur offense the one cut downhill runners I feel like uh, Philip Lindsay would be a good fit there the Jacksonville Jaguars James Robinson came on last year but they don't really have anybody else. And James Robinson's like 220 pounds. He's a bigger back. Um, so I feel like Philip Lindsay would be a good complimentary piece right there for him. And then of course, Denver. I feel like Denver is where he wants to be, but doesn't make sense for a career move and for putting up numbers and production and getting the most touches. Probably not, as long as Melvin Gordon's there. And I'm not the biggest Melvin Gordon guy, so I already feel bad for Philip Lindsay. But um, I feel like if he went somewhere else, like the Jets or maybe Jacksonville as well, he may get more touches in a more solidified role. So we'll find Find out what happens but in my heart I still want him to stay in Denver and number five we have Leonard Fournette the former fourth overall pick back in 2017 had a couple nice seasons in Jacksonville got surprisingly cut before the season started and then opened the door for James Robinson once again but he went to Tampa Bay kind of split the backfield with Ronald Jones and it was a very weird year because Bruce Arians like Bill Belichick does not put up with the fumbling it, feel, it felt like the entire year one guy would fumble, the next guy would come in, the other guy would fumble, the other guy would come in. It's just, uh, just a complete, like, they would just change off between him and Ronald Jones the entire time. Leonard Fournette had the hot hand in the playoffs, and it went from playoff Lenny to Super Bowl Lenny, and he played very well. Um, so I'm happy to see him win a Super Bowl there. So he was on a one-year deal, of course, and he had some success. He basically, you know, he wasn't the best. He averaged under four yards per carry, as you can see. He dropped a lot of passes, I feel like. I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but he had a few drops at least, especially in the playoffs. He had two drops in the Packers game, had uh, one or two in the Super Bowl. So like, he's not the most reliable pass catcher, but uh, between the tackles runner, Leonard Fournette's pretty good. He's had some injuries in his career, of course. I mean, he did miss a lot of games in his second year, missed a, a few games in his first year. So that's something to watch out for. I don't think Fournette's going to get like a big contract that a former fourth overall running back at age 26 should get. But if Leonard Fournette got like a, I don't know what type of contract, like a three year and 24 million dollar type deal i feel like that would be a nice contract for him so the teams i can see him going to is once again the uh, tampa bay buccaneers i feel like why would you leave there it's been a good role for him they have a good offensive line tom brady should hopefully be around for the next couple years the uh, new england patriots i mean i don't know i feel like it's it could make sense kind of like chris carson once again just get like a bigger back in there run between the tackles and if rex burkhead leaves then you have a kind of a, a role to fill there so that could make sense then the los angeles chargers who 
I guess not many people are talking about. They have Austin Eckler, but they like to run two running backs there. They had Kalen Balaj, Justin Jackson. Balaj was actually not that bad. Like, Balaj was terrible on the Dolphins. Then he went to the uh, Chargers and was actually pretty good. So they have him. They also have Joshua Kelly, who was a rookie last year. Started off well. Then got worse as the year went on. So if they want like more of a veteran guy in there, it's probably a better running back. I could see Leonard Fournette going there. It's not a guarantee. But I think if I had to guess right now, it's probably going to stay with the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And to wrap it up here, we have the honorable mention. So Le'Veon Bell. The, man, Le'Veon Bell. What happened to him? So Le'Veon, of course, went to the Jets. Did not work out. Went to the Chiefs. Didn't really work out either. So... I don't know what Le'Veon Bill has to offer at this point. He's not the same guy he used to be. You're just paying for a name at that point. I feel like he might as well draft a guy. I'm sure Le'Veon will get picked up by somebody, but it will not be for a lot of money. It won't be for a lot of guaranteed touches. So I don't know what his role will be, but I guess we'll find out. Definitely not the most uh, attractive running back out there on the market. Tevin Coleman, I mean, you know, he was a guy that a few years ago was a very... You know, he was a guy that some teams wanted because he had some success splitting the backfield with Devontae Freeman. Then he kind of went to the Niners and didn't really do too much. He got hurt at some points. He was pretty ineffective. So I feel like Tevin Coleman will not get that much of a, you know, he won't get the biggest contract. He'll probably go somewhere. But once again, just like uh, Le'Veon Bell, not many guaranteed touches. Todd Gurley, wow. So Le'Veon Bill and Todd Gurley on the same list here. Todd Gurley is only 26. I mean, he's got to be the most washed up 26-year-old I've ever seen. And it's not his fault. He has the knee issues, of course. But Todd Gurley went to the Falcons. Didn't have the best year. He found the end zone a lot, which is what he's good at. But outside of that, he was really not that effective. So Todd Gurley will probably go somewhere else on like a one or two year deal, but I don't really see him getting a ton of guaranteed money once again. So it's kind of sad the way his career is gone, but I have no idea where he'll go. Uh, Mike Davis. Mike Davis, uh, it's his birthday tomorrow. He's 28 at the moment. He'll be 29 tomorrow. So happy birthday to Mike Davis. So he was really good when he filled in for Christian McCaffrey. He came in and started putting up ridiculous numbers. Kind of, uh, you know, didn't fall off. It's kind of like his numbers got worse and worse as the games went on. But when he first came in for McCaffrey, his numbers were great. He's a pretty good receiver. He's like a bowling ball in there. He can run some guys over. Like, I like Mike Davis as a backup a lot. He might return to Carolina once again. James White, he's now 29 years old. So James White, I mean, you know, he's had a lot of uh, success in the past. With Tom Brady, I feel like there's not really much of a point to stay there. Maybe he goes back to play with Brady in Tampa Bay. I have no idea. They don't really have a receiving back if you're Tampa. They they have, uh, what's his name, Keyshawn Vaughn, I think, the uh, rookie. He didn't play that much, so maybe James White has a role there in Tampa. I have no idea. Maybe he'll stay in uh, New England and be loyal to them. We'll find out. Matt Breda, a former 49er. He went to the Dolphins last year. Didn't really do much. I don't think he was healthy anyway, but a lot of upside. He's still young. He's very fast. I feel like he can make big plays plays happen but he's always had a health history that's not really on his side so we'll find out about him James Conner James Conner filled in for Le'Veon Bell that one year and he almost had a thousand yards he had a bunch of touchdowns he was really good kind of fell off since then he can't really stay healthy he was good at some points last year then he was terrible at some points so pretty inconsistent player I don't really know if he'll return back to Pittsburgh but they only have Benny Snell back there. They do have Anthony McFarland, who could be a good running back entering year two. So James Conner is definitely not a guarantee to go back to Pittsburgh. Jamal Williams, he's a pretty good backup. Like, I was pretty low on Jamal Williams entering this year, but I feel like he got a lot better out of nowhere. Like, I guess he improved a lot as a player. So Jamal Williams would be a very nice backup for a lot of teams. He uh, could stay in Green Bay, of course, but that would be a nice backup for a lot of teams out there. Gus Edwards, another guy that improved drastically. I mean, Gus Edwards used to be not good in my opinion, but something happened this year he looks a lot better um even uh, his teammate uh, what's his name mark ingram he's a free agent as well he's now 31 32 years old i would not want mark ingram on my team but you know someone's probably going to sign him but mark ingram's there as well and then carlos hyde who's been bouncing around the past few years you know the 49ers the houston texans i think he went to cleveland one year maybe jacksonville too like he's been everywhere i feel like then he went to um the seattle seahawks last year so carlos hyde he gets his numbers. He's okay. You know what you're getting there. He's not the uh, the most explosive athlete, not a great catcher in the backfield, out of the backfield, but, you know, he's okay. He's a pretty good between the tackles runner, but he's not anything special, so you know what you're getting there. So that'll pretty much do it for the honorable mentions, and uh, once again, leave in the comments. Uh, where do you think these guys will go? Like, which teams would be the best fit for these players? I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll do wide receivers next time and the next video, hopefully coming out in the next couple of days, and uh, I'll talk to you guys next time.